Hey bro, it's been two years since this upload, and I noticed you post a lot of wrong content, which is awesome. I was wondering why it's still $120, and why it's still in alpha stage. I see gameplay and I love it, I'm willing to spend whatever, I just don't understand if it's worth the extra $80. Is it still worth it today? Maybe an update video, thanks. Thanks for your comment, Rusio's dubstep mixes? I'm not sure if that's how you say that, but yeah. I made this video back in 2019, around September, I think it was about a month after the supporter edition and standard edition pre-orders launched. And has my opinion changed? Do I think it's worth it? Well, we're gonna get into it in just a second. So before we get into it, I need you to like up the video so that more people can see it. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell. If you would like to support me, hop on that Patreon or click on that join button underneath the video. I gotta thank my main man, Michael Golden, because he chose the tier five, which is like $50. Wow, what a freaking chat. I didn't even realize that he was supporting me that much. Like, wow, holy cow. Thank you, man. You're freaking awesome. All right, let's go ahead and talk about it. So like I said before, I made this video back in 2019, about a month after the initial gameplay trailer launched and they dropped the supporter edition which was $120 and the standard edition which was $40. At the time I was really hesitant because $120 was a lot and I mean it still is today if you think about it but at that time the reasoning that I had for buying it was because you know my channel was really blowing up off of Ready or Not so I had incentive to buy it but at the same time I was kind of hoping that Ready or Not would actually get their shit together because before Ready or Not was really just like fumbling the ball all over the damn place with boneheaded decisions and broken promises and just horrible PR and communication, man. People were like screaming from the rooftops for them to actually drop updates and communicate with us. I really didn't think anything of it because, you know, they weren't taking any money at the time. But afterwards, when we put $120 on the line and they were going dead silent, that's when I got really pissed off. So what came with the supporter edition? Well, initially, the supporter edition really didn't offer much. An FBI HRT pack, which is just the skin that you see in the picture a different shield than a gas mask and two guns the entryman 590a shotgun and the pf9c g19 pistol we got single player co-op and multiplayer the single player and the co-op were under nda but we could show off the multiplayer 25 percent discount on the first expansion and for the first 1000 pre-orders gave you a mouse pad which was a really good looking mouse pad but they sold out within like the first week and i ended up buying the 120 supporter edition like a month later so that's kind of pointless to me. A lot of people were like, man, that's really not even a good deal. So then they tried to entice us a little bit more by giving us the first expansion free digital copy of the original Ready or Not soundtrack and listing in the game credits. Well, I think that that's slightly better. When they say expansion, they mean like actual big content to come to the game, like more than just one map and two guns. <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege. I think the digital copy of the original Ready or Not soundtrack is cool, but I feel like people are just gonna like, you know, put it on YouTube for just anybody to listen to. So it's kind of like, eh. And name the credits. I mean, that's pretty cool. Might even be able to see it in the uh, game itself in the little hub area. Quick update, I'm coming in from the future to this video. I actually noticed that they took off the listing name in the credits on the supporter edition. I just got confirmation that the listing in the credits is only for people who actually bought before it went into early access. So the people that bought afterwards don't have access to the listing in the credits anymore. So just thought I'd mention that because I was wondering why it wasn't there anymore. All right, back to the video. So I definitely think that it's a lot better than its initial iteration, but I was a little more accepting of it back in 2019. Now, for the longest time, I've really regretted it because they were updating the supporter edition for about a month or two. But then after that, they just stopped coming out with the updates for the PVE or single player co-op. You know, the thing that we all came here for, you know, the things that you guys were advertising. No, they just kept updating the multiplayer, which I mean, the multiplayer is cool, I guess, but I really didn't come here for the multiplayer I came here for the PvE content so yeah after a while they also stopped updating the PvP content too they literally left supporters in the dark for long periods of time to the point where supporters began to start screaming from the rooftops again and rightfully so what the hell is going on well they did come out because of all the freaking screaming they were like giving us the PR talk of oh we don't want to give it to our supporters unless we know that it's good for them and to us it's like what do we care it's under NDA and an alpha. Just give us whatever build to shut us up. It's as simple as that. You know on your website it says that the alpha was going to evolve over time, right? And there were basically playtesters to try out the game and look for bugs. But I guess Void didn't think so because they ended up giving a brand new build to a bunch of content creators that had probably never heard of Ready or Not before. And can you guess what happened? Ding, 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 ding. It was broken. Woohoo, yeah. The only thing that this event showed was that Ready or Not was not ready for release. And uh, yeah. If only they had people who paid a hundred 
$120 to support your game and playtest alphas to find bugs. I wonder where you could find some of those, but I digress. And then after a while, we just kind of went quiet. I mean, the community manager was still talking and dropping like updates every now and then, but the updates kind of just felt like they were kind of just meh meh updates, you know? And then we got the announcement that Void Interactive was partnered with Team 17. And at first I was thinking, oh snap, this means like a good influx of money and that Team 17 is a publisher. So obviously they're going to whip Void's ass if they don't freaking get the dates right and get their shit together. So I was kind of like happy at that time. We even got a date, beta June, July, 2021. I can't wait. But then June, July comes around and they completely missed that date. And I'm like, well, what the frack? What was the point? Team 17, are you going to do anything? Hello? Is anyone there? And so that happened. Team 17 came and went. And after a while, towards the end of 2021, we finally get a build that actually feels good for once. This is probably like the closest build that actually feels like a spiritual successor to Swamp 4. If you want my full review of the current alpha of this build, then click on the eye icon or look for the link in the description. So do I think that the game is worth it at this very point in time? Well, as someone who's coming into the game and doesn't know the history, they're probably going to think, yeah, sure. But I'm someone who knows the history and I look at this and think, not right now. I don't think you should get the $120 edition because what's the difference between the standard and the supporter edition? It's really just a skin and a few guns. Nothing too significant. Now you might argue and say, well the point of the supporter is to support the developers. And you're right. And that's exactly what I did. I bought their supporter to support them. And what did they do? They left the supporters in the dark and snubbed us so many goddamn times that it's just hard for me to let go or forget that. Because what if more people buy the supporter and they do it again to them? Like, like, that's the thing that I worry about the future of this game. But then what do I think about the standard edition? Well, I actually lie to people because I would tell them it's probably better for you to get the standard edition because when it launches, it's going to be in beta and there's more likely to be more content that's going to be worth that standard edition price. Well, it launched into early access, but it's still an alpha. So what does that mean? Well, it means that there's actually less content at a $40 price. So the standard is effectively not worth it at $40. Like if they had cut it down to like maybe 20 or 30, then I would have been like, oh, okay, well, whatever. But no, they launched into early access with the exact same alpha update as we got about a month before. I would have at least thought that they would have enticed it by like adding another map or a few more guns, but no, the exact same build got put up for 40 bucks. But do rag didn't you just say that the build was actually pretty good? Yes, but this build actually has less content than the previous update that we had before this update. And if you want to know how much stuff was actually taken away, I'll put it up on screen right now right now. So this is the stuff that's been taken out of the game. And I understand the reason behind it, but I look at it as like, you took stuff away from the game and now there's less content than there was before. I understand why you did it for stability and optimization, I assume. But I think it really sucks that a lot of this stuff is just gone now. I think a lot of people would have like understood if you had kept stuff in the game because it's still an alpha phase. But now that it's gone, like I look at it and I'm just like, there's a lot less content here. I don't think that standard is worth it. But this is a big but and I cannot lie. Void Interactive has put me between a rock and a hard place because what other game is out there that's like this? People might think Ground Branch, and I'll tell them, no, not really. Ground Branch is more trying to mimic the old Rainbow Sixes, you know, like one through three, maybe Raven Shield. I guess people would try to compare this game to Zero Hour, and I'm just like, I don't really see it. Like, I kind of see Zero Hour's like PVE is more of like a terrorist hunt from Rainbow Six Siege. Like, the only game that comes close is like 2005 Swap 4, and I like Swap 4, but I've played the hell out of it, and don't think I'm gonna come back anytime soon. Like, let's be honest here. These types of games are basically extinct and AAA developers are basically trying to sell us on fucking NFTs and microtransactions and loot boxes and all this bullshit. Unfinished broken ass games. So now we're just playing a game of would you rather pick your poison giant douche versus turd sandwich. And you know what? Oh, Void, why couldn't you have made this more easier? Ugh. If Void Interactive is going to actually make a spiritual successor to Swap 4, then I can fucking deal with their nonsense. I would rather invest in this indie game that's actually trying to make a good game than invest in a company that's literally dropping dog shit. The only thing that I ask is that you just don't keep us in the dark and you update the game every now and then. Like, I don't, it doesn't have to be like a big update, you know? Just, just a map or maybe a, a gun, you know, just to keep us going, you know? If something isn't going right then let you know let us know the community can be very understanding because
because you've shown us that you have talent, but your PR sucks. <laughs> Actually, as I was recording this, they just dropped a new update about uh, stuff that they hope to see come out relatively soon in January. So, uh, cool. We'll get to that in a different video. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty much all I really got to say about this. Um, what are your thoughts? I know I've seen a lot of people out there in the freaking comment section of the game on Steam. Like, this is how you do early access. And I'm just like, mm. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna end the video. If you enjoyed the fact that I covered games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, or click on the join button underneath the video. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on Ready or Not or any other game that I decide to cover. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye